I just got back from the cinema from Detective Pikachu. What did I think about it? Well, let's get into it in my review with mild spoilers. Yo, Higassin here, and yes, this is my Detective Pikachu review, and like I said at the beginning, this will contain mild spoilers. I won't be getting too heavily into like the plot and any of the twists in this film, but you know, I'm going to be talking about a lot of the Pokemon in it, so if you don't want to know about all of the Pokemon that are in this film, then, you know, just warning you, I will spoil a few of these, and there is one scene in particular that I do want to talk about, but, you know, I'll, I'll leave a uh, spoiler note there when I actually get to that one. But anyway, let's get into it, and first of all, I have just got to say, I can't believe I finally get to see a live-action Pokemon film on the big screen, you know, way back when, when uh, Mewtwo Strikes Back first came out, that very first Pokemon film, seeing it in the cinema, I was, as a kid, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I never though thought that I'd be going back now as a 31 year old and seeing a live action Pokemon film, not an animated one. That is incredible. When I heard that they were making this film, I was so excited. I gotta be honest though, the film that we got isn't the film that when I first heard we were getting a live action film, it isn't the kind of film that I was necessarily wanting. You know, when they said live action Pokemon film, I was like, wow, Pokemon League the movie. That's what I wanna see. When I found out they were adapting Detective Pikachu, a game I haven't played, I never really kind of cared for it. I'm more of a core series gamer. You know, I like my competitive battling and stuff. So I was like, oh, I don't know. But when the trailers started coming out and I started seeing like Ryan Reynolds in it and everything, I was really, really into it and I was really hyped for this film. So now I want to tell you how I actually thought about it. I'll give you my verdict at the end. But before I get to that, I'll talk you through how I actually felt about the film. So we're starting off, let's talk about Rhyme City, the main setting of this game and game, film, the main setting of this film and wow, it looks incredible. The way they integrated the Pokemon and all of the signage and the CGI Pokemon and the humans and Pokemon working together was amazing. But sadly, we don't really get to see it as much as I would have hoped. I really wish we could have really got in there and explored around the city, but we only really get a good idea of it in a few scenes at the beginning. And then sadly in the film, they later move away from Ryan City for a bit. And so you don't really get to see as much of the human and Pokemon working together. You only really get snippets of it here and there. I would have loved to have gone in there in a lot more detail. The Pokemon themselves, they look incredible, really faithful to the original designs, yet also got that uh, realistic touch to them, and they just look great. I really want a game with these kind of graphics on them now. A lot of the Pokemon though, we don't really get to see in that much detail. Most of them are just background ones. We get like a few that are more standout, like Mr. Mime, Jigglypuff, Lickitung, and of course the main star Pikachu and Psyduck. But for the most part, a lot of them are just you're looking in the background. And once you start to notice them though, this is another slight little problem with the film. Obviously they couldn't make all 800 plus Pokemon, so they only made a few. But when I say a few, I literally mean they only made a few. And you keep noticing the same Pokemon over and over again. A few odd choices in there, but I am happy with the fact that they took Pokemon from all generations. They didn't just cater to like the main uh, fan base ones, you know, the, the iconic ones. Obviously you still got them in there. You got your Charizard in there, you got your Jigglypuff, you got Magikarp and stuff, familiar ones. But you've also got some really odd ones like Aldenos in there, Bufalons in there, and a lot of the ones from the newer games as well. So I appreciate that they took a broad uh, range of Pokemon from across the games and put them in. But yeah, you do start to notice that, oh look, it's that same Pokemon again and again and again in the background. For some reason, Rhyme City, it must be in the middle of a Dodo nest, because there are Dodoos and Dodrios everywhere. I don't know if somebody on the production team was a big Dodo fan, or if it was just really easy to turn that Pokemon into a realistic looking one, but you really notice Dodo all over the place. And there's other ones as well, that as you're watching it, you're just like, oh look, there's that one again, there's that one again, there's that one again. Pidgeot was the one as well for me. I just kept noticing Pidgeot, and it's a little bit weird that you have these great big Pidgeots living in this city, but they never have their Pidgey or their Pidgeotos with them. You did expect to see maybe more Pidgey than you do Pidgeot. I guess all of the Pidgey in Rhyme City had such a good life, they all evolved. But where's all the little Pidgeys at? Another thing that I did kind of notice is, as you go through the film, you get introduced occasionally to these new Pokemon. And then after that, you then start noticing them in the background as well. And every now and then that would take me out of it. Obviously you saw in the trailers, that shot with all of the Bulbasaurs. Well, after that scene, you then start noticing them in Ryan City. There were a few Pokemon that I only kind of saw one or two times throughout the thing, and sadly, them ones you don't really get a good look at them. 
you know, you get, uh, as you saw in some of the trailers, you get the comfy and the floette, but you never actually get a good detailed close-up look at them most of the time they're just kind of blurry and in the background i think i saw a graveler at one point but you only like saw the back of it running away and there was other pokemon that i really wish that we could have seen in a lot more detail than we never did the main one being octillery we saw octillery in this marketplace in the background you can see him working away in the background then you see another one later on but you never really get a good close-up look of them but when you do get a good close-up look of one of the pokemon they look incredible i really like magic carp i really like gyarados uh, I would have liked to have seen Gyarados again, a little bit longer and a little bit more detail. But all of the Pokemon, they look incredible. Mainly, the main Pokemon of the thing, Detective Pikachu himself. But I want to get to him a little bit later. First of all, let me talk about the human characters. The main character, Tim, at the beginning, he's a little bit mopey. He's a little bit kind of boring and, you know, it's a little bit hard to connect to him. Once Pikachu gets into it and you get that relationship between Tim and Detective Pikachu, the film really starts to pick up and they have a really great dynamic. But overall, Tim on his own, especially at the beginning, I wasn't as invested. But by the end of the film, I really liked his character a lot more. Got this other character called Lucy who goes along with him. She's the character with the Psyduck. And she's not as interesting. She's a little bit over the top. A lot of the characters in this are very over the top she's like an intern who wants to be a detective and she plays it up like quite like a uh, big you know that her basically her character is i just want to be a detective and uh she kind of shouts about it quite a lot i guess maybe that's kind of true in the fact that in the games every person in this game just kind of has their one thing that they do but here in the film it was very noticeable that she was just like I want to be a detective here's me trying to be a, a detective in like the most cliche like kind of detective ways Psyduck was really good really liked Psyduck's design but I feel like Psyduck was kind of there as a plot point you know he was basically there until he was needed and then you don't really get to see Psyduck as much but I did enjoy seeing Pikachu and Psyduck's little relationship when you got the few moments of them two talking the rest of the characters in this film they're not really that interesting there's this one character that had pink hair that first I thought was going to be somebody else and then the reveal of it later on in the film was actually quite good but for the most part the villains in this piece they're all pretty right off a lot of the characters are all one dimensional and a lot of the human characters just like a lot of the Pokemon don't really feature in this film at all to be honest let's talk about the character that does feature the most the main character detective Pikachu it's in the titles played by Ryan Reynolds man this character steals the show really good great sense of humor and comic timing coming out of Ryan Reynolds. The Pikachu looks incredible. Sometimes it looks like it's really there on the screen and he is definitely the standout character of this film. So many great jokes coming out of him. So many like slightly more mature jokes that you wouldn't actually uh, expect Pikachu to say and stuff. And I really like that. It actually kind of makes it a little bit more realistic. And when you've got Pikachu talking about like potty humor and you're like, oh yeah, well I guess Pokemon do do that kind of stuff. Um, Got one of my dreams come uh, true where Pikachu actually picks up something in this film that you would never expect Pikachu to pick up in this film. When you see the film, you'll notice that. I don't think it's in any other trailer, so I don't want to spoil it, but I'm like, I can't believe they actually did that in a kid's film on the big screen. Pikachu holding that one particular item, but that was incredible. And I liked how it kind of got into how uh, humans and Pokemon can communicate. You get a lot of that with Pikachu in this film. And that's actually a nice touch that that could go across, you know, all of the canon to the games and to the anime and really explains how Pokemon can actually talk to one another. Speaking of Pokemon speaking, you get a few Pokemon that you get saying their names, but not all of them kind of had their names. Bulbasaur only just kind of made little like meow, meow, meow noises. You didn't get the classic like Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur. It, it that kind of like disappointed me a little bit i was really looking forward to but you do get the jigglypuff in there and you do get the side duck with its classic side ducks so that was really good so what about the plot itself it's called detective pikachu how was their detective work well i'll be honest with you the detective work that they did in this film wasn't that good they didn't really do much detecting uh, a lot of the stuff kind of just fell into their lap or they just got shown stuff through really convenient means of like exposition and stuff uh, so I don't really feel like you got too much investigation in this film but I did just enjoy the plot as it went through but I think I was more enjoying it for the fact that I'm seeing live action Pokemon on the big screen rather than the overall story itself I feel like this film might kind of degrade over time but I definitely enjoyed the world building and everything around it and just the character chemistry between Pikachu and Tim 
This isn't your Pokemon League movie. We got a hint of that, but we never really got to see the Pokemon battle too much. We rarely got to see him use any moves, or at least any moves without like names being said to them. So I did find that a little bit too disappointing. You know, the hardcore Pokemon battler in me really wanted to see all that on the big screen. And we got it a little bit, but I wish we got it a tiny little bit more. Got to see that Gengar versus Blastoise, but we really never got to actually see it a full on battle in the fall. It would just keep cutting away. And uh, when Detective Pikachu does use a few moves, you're like, hey, I know exactly what that move is, but it's never really uh, referenced too much in the film of like the classic Pokemon battling that we know and love from the games and the anime. Speaking of games and the anime, this film had quite a few uh, little deep cuts and cameos that fans of the series would appreciate, but I was expecting a few more deep cuts, but the ones we got were certainly good. So overall, how would I rate the film? Well, definitely a funny film. Definitely great to see the Pokemon in the flesh on the big screen, but I wouldn't say it's the best film. It's definitely carried by Ryan Reynolds' Detective Pikachu and the brand awareness that surrounds the whole film. But it's still very enjoyable and I'm definitely up for sequels. If we ever do get a sequel of this film, I really hope they go more of like the main series games with this. I really want to see a lot more of the battling aspects of Pokemon and the catching and the exploring the world stuff and a lot more of the humans and Pokemon working together. I'd really like to get into more of that. But I'd say for this film, I'll just give this one, Detective Pikachu, a purple tier. So this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about that's a little bit more spoilery. So if you don't want to be spoiled, uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you did enjoy my content. I've got loads more content constantly coming on this channel and on Twitch. But let me just talk about these spoilery moments right now. Ready? Okay, let's talk about the giant Torterra. Well, that was an amazing scene. It did feel really weird and out of place. It felt like they just kind of did that in the concept art and felt like they had to get that in the film. It did look incredible. There are so many questions regarding them giant Torterra. Obviously, they were experimenting with the growth stuff to make these giant Torterras, but how on earth did they make them and nobody's noticed? These Torterra, when they were getting up, it was like earthquakes going off. How was that not felt in Rhyme City? It was only like a little bit down the road. And these Torterra were like massive, giant-sized Torterra. Definitely interesting concept, but they make no sense. How do they move around without anybody noticing? How did nobody notice giant mountains just appearing out of nowhere overnight? So many questions about them giant Torterra, but I definitely enjoyed seeing them on the big screen. That was a very unique way of showing Torterra. What about other Pokemon in this film? Well, thinking off the top of my head, I saw, you know, I think I saw most of them. Um, I noticed a Togepi there in the background once. Like I said, there was the Graveler. Every now and then saw a Rattata. You've got the Dodoros, Dodrios, uh, Florette, Confei. You've got the Pidgeotto. You've got Purloin. You had the uh, Pancham and Pangoro, Golurk, Growlithe, Arcanine, Snorlax, Machamp. Uh, who else was in the film? Obviously, you've got Mr. Mime, Lickitung, Jigglypuff, Pikachu, Ludicolo, Snubble, um, Dodoro, Dodrio. Did I say them already? I can't remember. Oh, uh, Rufflet, Braviary. Uh, I think there was an Eevee. You definitely got the Flareon, but did you see the Eevee before? I think maybe you did. Uh, Magikarp, Gyarados, Squirtle, Charmander, Totodile, Charizard. Bulbasaur. There were Venusaurs in the background when they were taking Pikachu to the uh, to get healed. I was like, oh, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Venusaur, like that anime episode? But no, it, it wasn't. Um, but yeah, you do see the Venusaurs in the background. Would have liked to have seen it a little bit more close up. Uh, what else? We've got Octillery, um, Apom, Emolga, Joltix, Aldenos, uh, Psyduck, Obviously Mewtwo, Ditto, Ditto was great in this actually, I really love seeing Ditto in this, Slacking, um, and I think with that I'm pretty much got all of them. Did I say go look? I can't remember, uh, but I think that was pretty much all of the Pokemon that you actually got in this film. Let me know down in the comments what other ones there were, if I missed any. Obviously we got References to a lot of other Pokemon in the background, like we've got Dialga and Palkia, there was a poster of Rayquaza, they referenced Mew, and there were lots of other references out there. I'm talking about like the Pokemon that are actually on the screen. Oh, uh, also uh, Sneasel as well. Uh, and obviously also Greninja was in this film as well. 
Hey, so thanks for watching. What did you think? Let me know about it in the comments below. And if you enjoyed my video, maybe give it a like. And if you really liked it, why not subscribe? You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Twitch. Oh, and here's a related video you might enjoy and something more fresh. I've been Higassin and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!